The Lives of the Saints, by Father Alban Butler, April 17th, Blessed Clara Gambacorda, or Clara of Pisa. Blessed Clara was the daughter of Peter Gambacorda, who became practically the master of the Republic of Pisa. Clara was born in 1362. Her brother, Blessed Peter of Pisa, June 17th, was seven years older. Thinking of the future of his little daughter, whom the family called Dora, Apocope of Theodora, her father engaged her to marry Simon of Massa, a wealthy heir, although the girl was only seven years old. Despite her young age, Dora used to take off during Mass the betrothal ring and murmured, Lord, you know that the only love I want is yours. When her parents sent her, at the age of twelve, to her husband's house, the young girl had already begun her life of mortification. Her mother-in-law was kind to her, but when she noticed that she was too generous with the poor, she forbade her to enter the household pantry. Wishing to practice charity in some way, Dora joined a group of ladies who assisted the sick and took in her charge a poor, cancerous woman. Dora's married life was short-lived. Both she and her husband were victims of an epidemic, in which her husband lost his life. As the Blessed was still very young, her relatives tried to remarry her, but she opposed with all the energy of her fifteen years. A letter from St. Catherine of Siena, whom she had met in Pisa, encouraged her in her resolution. Dora cut her hair and distributed her rich clothes among the poor, which provoked the indignation of her mother-in-law and her sisters-in-law. Then, with the help of one of her maids, she managed to secretly arrange her entry into the order of the poor Clares. When everything was ready, she fled from her home to the convent, where she immediately received the habit and took the name Clara. The next day her brothers came to the convent to look for her. The nuns, very frightened, took her down the wall into the arms of her brothers, who took her to their house. There Clara was imprisoned for six months, but neither hunger nor threats could make her change her mind. Finally, Pedro Gambacorda gave up and not only allowed his daughter to enter the Dominican convent of the Holy Cross, but also promised to build a new convent. There Clara met Maria Mancini, who was also a widow and would one day attain the honor of the altars. The writings of St. Catherine of Siena exerted a profound influence on the two nuns, who, in the new convent, founded by Gambacorda in 1382, succeeded in establishing the rule in all the fervor of the primitive observance. Blessed Clare was first sub-prioress and then prioress of the convent, from which many of the holy religious destined three to spread the reform movement in other cities of Italy departed. To this day, the cloistered nuns of St. Dominic are called the Sisters of Pisa in Italy. Prayer, manual labor and study reigned in the convent of the blessed. Clare's spiritual director used to repeat to the nuns, never forget that in our order there are very few saints who have not also been wise. Clare had to face throughout her life economic difficulties, for the convent constantly demanded alterations and new buildings. In spite of this, on one occasion, when she came into possession of a large sum of money that she could have used for the convent, she preferred to give it as a gift for the foundation of a hospital. But the virtues in which he most distinguished himself were undoubtedly the sense of duty and the spirit of forgiveness, which he practiced to a heroic degree. Giacomo Appiano, whom Gambacorda had always helped and in whom he had placed all his trust, treacherously murdered him when he was trying to maintain peace in the city. Two of his sons also died at the hands of the traitor's supporters. Another of Clara's brothers, who managed to escape, came to seek refuge in the convent of the Blessed, closely followed by the enemy. Her brother was killed in front of the convent door, and the shock made Clara seriously ill. However, the Blessed forgave Appiano so heartily that she asked him to send her a plate from his table to seal her forgiveness by sharing her meal. The Blessed suffered greatly towards the end of her life. Lying on her deathbed, with her arms outstretched, she murmured, My Jesus, here I am on the cross. Shortly before her death, a radiant smile illuminated her face, and the blessed 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 her daughters present and absent. She was, at her death, 57 years old. Her cult was confirmed in 1830.